Ladies, welcome to my digestive system. When your gut and vaginal bacteria are off balance, you may feel it. But just one Align Women's Probiotic Daily helps soothe digestive upsets and support vaginal health. Welcome to an Align Gut. People remember ads with young people having a good time. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's a pool party. Good times insurance. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Tomorrow on ET, Christian Bale's mic drop moment with Taylor Swift. Yeah, how unlikely is that? You know, uh, it's so cool. <laughs> though. We're with the all-star cast of Amsterdam. Cannot wait to see that movie. Now, before we go, happy anniversary to my faves, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Oh, Tim so posted this sweet, sweet tribute to his wife on Instagram oh, with the caption, wow, 26 years. Happy anniversary to my right, girl. Those I those love you, baby. Jam. So not only are these two super sweet, they're also hilarious together, especially when it comes to how they've celebrated the big day. On the couch. On the couch and in PJs. Yeah. Happening now. A veteran San Antonio police officer shoots and kills a man on the city's north side this afternoon. Why Chief McManus says police were called out here in the first place. Uvalde CISD fired a recently hired district police officer. That officer was the DPS trooper at Robb Elementary the day of the shooting. Coming up, the community protest before that decision and the reaction to the news. And the latest Drought Monitor update was released this morning. We'll show you that, plus get you an early preview at that weekend forecast. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin at 5 with breaking new developments in that shooting at a McDonald's parking lot. San Antonio police submitting evidence in a case where an officer shot at 17-year-old Eric Contu. That evidence now in the hands of the Bear County District Attorney's Civil Rights Division. The officer in the case has already been fired. Now it's up to the DA's office to determine if charges are going to be brought against that officer. The review will also consider whether to drop or continue to pursue charges against Cantu, who's accused of evading arrest here. And new at five, a man accused of stalking the woman he used to date killed today when confronted with police at her home. Police had already been on this case since the woman had feared that he would come back, and she was right. Our Alicia Barrera was at the scene on Bemel Lane where that deadly confrontation unfolded this afternoon. This was a a tragedy waiting to happen if 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 this were to have escalated any further. Neighbors say they heard at least eight shots fired. But there were multiple shots fired, as you can see. According to Chief McManus, the 33-year-old suspect lived in Hidalgo County, and although there was a protective order against him, he was stalking his ex-partner. But she discovered that he had been tracking her for about a year now, knew where she lived, knew where she worked out, knew where she worked, and today was the first day that he showed up at her residence. The woman texted the detective assigned to her case, prompting officers to quickly surround the home. We spoke to several neighbors out here today and they described this neighborhood as calm, some adding that they do recall seeing this suspect on Sunday. However, they never imagined it would lead to this. He was said to be in the back of the house, so uh, four or five officers went to the, to the rear of the house. He came out with a gun, uh, pointed the gun at his head and then started heading back into where the um, where the complainant was, the officer shot the key from, from getting back to the female. The man was pronounced dead at the scene and the woman was not physically hurt. Now that officer who has not been identified is on administrative leave. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Now to more fallout in Uvalde after a former DPS trooper being investigated for her actions inside Robb Elementary was hired by the Uvalde School District. Less than a day after learning about a new hire, that school district police officer is now off the job. The district fired Crimson Elizondo today, and it is not the first time she's actually been at the district. As we said, she previously worked as a trooper for the Texas Department of Public Safety, was there as dozens of officers stood inside and outside Robb Elementary. 19 students and two children were killed. More than an hour later, the gunman as well. Today's firing follows growing protests in Uvalde. Our John Paul Barajas is there. He joins us live. John Paul. 
Parents feel like they aren't being listened to or heard, and that's what led them to start protesting here about two weeks ago. And the news of the hiring of Crimson Elizondo only reinforced those feelings, which is why this morning they had this entire building surrounded, ready not to let a single person in. Right now, it's a much smaller crowd, only a few people in the back, but we're told they will be back later this evening. As for school district officials, they have not shown up here at all today. They have put out a statement saying, we sincerely apologize to the victims, families, and the greater Uvalde community for the pain that this revelation has caused. Ms. Elizondo's statements in the audio is not consistent with the district's expectations. The audio they're referring to is Elizondo being heard on body cam video saying, if my son had been in there, I would not have been outside. I promise you that, according to CNN. Mother of Jackie Casares Gloria had this to say. Why? Why not our kids? Why wouldn't she not been in that room? Why not? If she would have saved her kids, why not mine? How can there be an employee, especially UCISD, to hire somebody? Do they not do a background checks or call, you know, follow up with employers, check employee history? Um, it's if they couldn't do that, I wonder how much else they're not doing. We have received a letter from DPS stating that they notified the district about Elizondo on July 28th as she was under investigation, although it is not clear just yet what incident caused her to be under investigation. Coming up at 6, we'll try to get more answers from the school district and hear more from the families. In Uvalde, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. We're staying on this story, but there's more that the families of the victims in Uvalde want, and that includes the top job at the Texas Department of Public Safety. State Senator Roland Gutierrez and families are asking that DPS Director Stephen McGraw resign. He previously had told CNN that if he would resign if any of his troopers responding to Robb Elementary that day had, quote, any culpability, end quote. The family say the actions of then trooper Crimson Elizondo fall in that category and her behavior on that day is a reflection on McGraw. We will continue to follow the story on air and online at KSAT.com. And meanwhile, researchers have looked at the connection between mass shootings and domestic violence, but experts say the important link is being overlooked. That study released in 2020 by the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence. It showed in more than two thirds, 68.2% of mass shootings analyzed, the perpetrator either killed family or intimate partners or had a history of domestic violence. The mass shooting at Robb Elementary, as well as the shooting in Sutherland Springs five years ago, involved cases where shooters had their own cases of domestic violence. Today, our Courtney Friedman hosted a town hall on this topic, and panelists made clear there are things we can do to prevent mass shootings. The more we can do to take domestic violence seriously, uh, increase safety, reduce risks associated with domestic violence, we're also going to be addressing risks around firearms and mass shootings. The major issue that experts and politicians brought up today in the town hall had to do with removing firearms from people who've been convicted of domestic violence. You can watch the entire discussion right now on KSAT.com. New at five, gunfire inside a local pawn shop. Castle Hills police says say that none of those bullets hit the victim. Part of the confrontation caught on camera, though. Investigators say Eric Lorenzo pulled a gun on another man, then fired. This was at the Cash America Pawn Shop near Jackson Keller and Loop 410 on Saturday. Officers confirmed that Lorenzo ended up missing the man, then tried to get away. He didn't make it too far, though. Castle Hills police say Lorenzo's car would not start, so he ran to a nearby HEB and tried to hide in the bathroom there. Bear County records show he's accused of unlawfully carrying a weapon as a felon and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They worked in the middle of a disaster zone a week and a day since they left for Florida. The CPS Energy team back in San Antonio. The 35 member crew began returning just after one this afternoon. They were dispatched to Jacksonville, Florida first, then to Lakeland. One member says they dealt with lots of swampy areas, lots of climbing to repair power lines, but the people there were very grateful. They were very appreciative to see us from Texas down there actually working. Um, very grateful to have us down there. Um, lots of pizza, um, lots of waters, and lots of thank yous. Great job, Robert, and your co-workers. CPS Energy has sent crew members to hard-hit areas before. In one case, two members were sent to help power, to get power up and running in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria in 2018. 
Meantime, our meteorologist Adam Caskey continues cleanup efforts in Fort Myers, Florida. He began the process at his in-laws home yesterday. As we showed you, he is making some progress. Hey, cleared out a good chunk of this room. Still have the air flowing through here. Coming along, baby. Coming along. Coming along. What a great attitude he's got. Adam is going to continue helping his family clear out the mess that Hurricane Ian left behind this week. But we still have your weather covered here at home. Let's bring in our Mia Montgomery. Hello. Yes, Adam is doing a great job just with all of the efforts out that way for sure. So happy that he is able to go and help family members out that way. Back here at home, it has been a quiet Thursday across South Texas. Let's take a look at some of those temperatures out there this afternoon. 87 out in Del Rio, 85 in Leon Springs, just shy of 90 out in shirts, 90 in New Braunfels and 88 in Bernie, so just a little warmer than average with those temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s. We will see those temps fall through the 80s if you're stepping out for any dinner time plans this Thursday, and then those temperatures fall into the 70s later tonight. Now we will start to see some more of those high clouds move in from the southwest. You can see that activity there generally in northern Mexico. That will continue to filter into our area as we get ready to wrap up the work week. We'll have an early preview of that weekend forecast, plus a look at the latest drought monitor in a bit. Thank you, Mia. Let's check out traffic right now. Let's go to 35 and division. There was a problem here earlier, but no evidence of it right now. Traffic moving very smoothly at I-35 and division at this hour. If you're hard of hearing, get ready. Hearing aids are going to be a lot easier to get and easier to afford in just a matter of days. Walgreens and Best Buy are among retailers that are getting ready to sell hearing aids without a prescription. 12 Your Size Marilyn Morris explains what to look for and what to ask for. Judy Mayer was missing out on a lot of conversations. Asking people to repeat themselves was the key to, okay, I can't hear you, I have hearing loss. To help Judy and millions of people buy hearing aids more easily, Congress passed the Over-the-Counter Hearing Aid Act, taking effect mid-month. Consumers will be able to buy hearing aids from the stores, online, without needing the intervention of an audiologist or a doctor. That will save people hundreds, even thousands of dollars. On October 17th, Walgreens will begin selling an $800 model in stores. Best Buy has some posted online and plans to set up a store experience. Before you buy, there are some important questions to ask, like what's the return policy? It can take a few weeks to adjust to a new pair. Do they have replaceable or rechargeable batteries? Are they sweat or water resistant? Can you pair them to your phone by Bluetooth? And do they have a telecoil to let you tap into listening systems at big events? The FDA is regulating the products. For one thing, all OTC hearing aids must let users adjust the volume. That may sound obvious, but you might be surprised by what's out there. I ordered a pair off the internet. They work fine, except you couldn't adjust them. Over-the-counter hearing aids aren't for everybody. People with severe hearing loss and children will still need to go to a professional for a prescription. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. The race is between two candidates, but allegations have pulled more people into the mix, including a well-known lawyer. What he wants the candidates to hear clearly coming up. And President Biden pushing for change when it comes to one particular drug. How a major marijuana move is expected to affect thousands of people. Next on the News at 5. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom. Several stories we're working on right now for the news at six o'clock, including one involving a convenience store owner killed while on the job. His wife was in court today to face her husband's killer. And then I just heard him on the other side say, dad has been shot and he's in the hospital. <laughs> Our Erica Hernandez was at the sentencing hearing for Zion Televeta, the convicted killer, and today at 6, the plea deal with millions of dollars. Plus, St. Mary's students interacting with history. It involves a World War II internment camp in Crystal City. 
and an unexpected tie to the tragedy in Uvalde. Plus, all he had to do was testify against his former boss and his criminal woes would go away. Well, coming up at six, why it's no longer that simple for the former captain who worked for Michelle Buddy in this villa. We'll see you today on the News at Six. Thank you so much, Myra. President Joe Biden taking his first major step toward decriminalizing marijuana. Today, he said that he will pardon all prior federal offenses of simple marijuana possession. That's a move that would affect thousands of Americans. Biden will also encourage governors to take similar steps to pardon state simple marijuana possession charges. The move begins the process of loosening up federal classifications of the drug. Marijuana remains illegal under federal law, even as individual states have moved toward legal use for recreational and medical purposes. Allegations of dark money used to fund television ads in the race for Bear County Judge. Attorney Thomas J. Henry responding to claims that he funded ads against Trish DeBerry. I have not put a single penny into the Bear County race. I have not provided any money to the Republican. I have not provided any money to the Democrat. He's defending himself because Republican candidate Trish DeBerry alleged others provided money to the ad against her as well as Thomas J. Henry. Yesterday, DeBerry and her opponent, Democratic Judge Peter Sakai, faced off in a forum where she also accused Sakai of knowing something about these ads. He vehemently denied those allegations. DeBerry claims she has evidence, but has not provided us with any so far. We're going to take a look outside with live cam. Look at that. Something is green in San Antonio. Yeah, it's it's corn. That's, yes. a, that's the corn maze at Trader's Village. I at least, you know, I'm sure that they had to use some artificial watering for this, Mia. Probably but at so, least it's if green. I had to guess. Yes, absolutely. That is the good news there. Definitely wish that we had more green spots across South Texas because we are in desperate need of rain. We actually will show the latest drought monitor update that was released earlier this morning. It is still pretty dry of an outlook as we head into the upcoming weekend. We'll get you a full look at that, plus that drought monitor update. And of course, a check in at the tropics for it's still very much being hurricane season out there in the Atlantic Basin. But first, right now, this 5 p.m. hour, 90 degrees is where we sit over at the airport. A dew point of 47, so still relatively drier air in the atmosphere, which definitely helps with that heat index value. And of course, that comfortable feel when you do step outside. So that is also good news heading into any of those evening plans. Notice as we take a look across the region, we are dry out there. There are a couple of showers out over the open waters there in the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico, but really for us, not any rain in sight. There is plenty of rain falling, though, across portions of the desert southwest, Arizona, reaching back over to New Mexico, and even across West Texas, all associated with that area of low pressure that we've been talking about over the past few days that really just stays put. Unfortunately, it's not going to really move eastward and give us any beneficial chances for rain here over the next couple of days. But because we do sit on the eastern side, of that system, the winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere are out of the southwest. So very similar to what we saw earlier this week, we're going to see more of those mid and upper level high clouds move in here over the next couple of days. It is possible that we find a few very, very isolated showers, more so just a few sprinkles before the day is done tomorrow, especially closer to the Rio Grande and in our southwestern counties. But for us here in San Antonio, we'll call it only a 10% chance. And really the reason being is because we do still have relatively drier air in place here at the surface. So even if it is trying to rain up high in the atmosphere, a lot of that will likely evaporate before it makes it here to the ground. Rain chances not looking fantastic as we head into next week. We do have another isolated chance Wednesday and into Thursday though of next week as we try to work a little bit more moisture in here and maybe see a front approach from the north. We'll Keep eyes on that, but this is the latest drought monitor that was released this morning. We are about 17 inches below where we should be for this time of year when it does come to rainfall, and you can definitely see that reflected here in the drought monitor with extreme to even exceptional droughts in place near the San Antonio Metro stretching up I 35 as well. So we only got that 10% chance in the works for tomorrow. Temperature wise, we'll start off in the 60s. That trend.
transitions to the upper 80s near about 90 as we head into the afternoon. Low 80s already into the early afternoon. That forecast high here in San Antonio pointed at about 89. More of the same into the weekend as well. Mornings in the 60s transitioning to the above average upper 80s each day with partly cloudy skies in store. In terms of tropical news, potential tropical cyclone 13. Essentially, that just means that this system does not have the center of circulation that it needs to be classified as a depression, but it is expected to develop that here pretty shortly. It is expected to move westward across the Caribbean into the upcoming weekend before making landfall in Central America. As of right now, this is no issue for us, which is good news there. We will just hope for a pattern shift soon that will give us more rain because we definitely we keep it. praying for it, Mia. Yes, thank you. All right, you know, they say home is where the heart is. I think the Spurs <laughs> also hoping that's maybe where the shots fall. <laughs> yeah, well, in this particular case, this team is so young. Most of the players on this team have never played a game in the AT&T yeah. Center. So when we come back, it is their debut tonight as they play host to Orlando. Get you ready for that preseason game. And Dak's presence is felt, even though he's not in the starting lineup. Coming up. Spurs have a shoot around today at their practice facility before hosting the Orlando Magic tonight in the AT&T Center in their preseason home opener. And look who made it to practice today. WNBA Championship coach Becky Hammond, fresh off their first title in Las Vegas. The Spurs are working to rebound for their blowout loss to the Rockets in Houston on Saturday, 134-96. And for some, like rookie Blake Wesley, it's their first time to play in the AT&T Center. I feel good, feel excited, I'm ready to play. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, Spurs fan get to see uh, 2022, 2023 team tonight, so we ready. All right, here's a look at that matchup tonight. Both teams looking for their first win, tipped at 7 p.m. Highlight swear tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Lawford. With the Dallas Cowboys, Stacey, defending Super Bowl champion Rams in Los Angeles this week, the Cowboys will be five and a half point underdogs. One reason why is that it appears that Dak Prescott will miss his fourth straight game after fracturing his right thumb in their season opener. So far, Cooper Rush, though, is 3-0 and as a Cowboys starter this year. And last week against the Commanders, he was able to find Michael Gallup for his first touchdown of the season in his first game back from ACL surgery. What does it mean to Michael to have Dak so involved with the team, even though he's not clean? And obviously, Dax in all the meetings um, talks to us on the side. You know, he reminds Cooper of certain things if he needs it. But uh, yeah, he's just a big, you know, big booster on the sidelines. Um, you know, he's out here handing out water now. But um, he's, uh, you know, obviously a great, uh, great leader. Even you know, not being on the field with us right now. All right, kickoff in SoFi Stadium on Sunday is set for 3:25 p.m. And Case at 12 Sports will be there. The Houston Texans will be looking for their first win of the season when they travel to Jacksonville this Sunday at noon, where they are seven-point underdogs. One thing that will help the Texans get their first W is getting more points on the board earlier. For example, in the loss of the L.A. Chargers, the Texans were outscored 27-7 in the first half, but then rallied to score 21 in the fourth quarter in the 34-24 loss. Will that late boost help build the team's confidence going into this game? I think we can definitely build on it, but at the end of the day, I think it's about starting fast is the name of the game. Um, the message to specifically on our side, the offense, being able to start fast uh, like we started in that second half. And don't forget, week seven of big game coverage starts tonight with one, two, three, four, five big games. I almost forgot. No, you I'm glad you reminded you me. Oh, <laughs> not true. We'll be right back. All right, one final look at those conditions outside. 90 in San Antonio, 86 in Del Rio, 81 up in Rock Springs. We'll see those temperatures fall through the 80s here over the next couple of hours and into the 70s. Looking ahead, more 60s in store. Temperatures near 90 in the afternoons. And only an isolated chance for rain or two. Thank you, Mia. We'll hold out hope for later then. Yeah. Thanks for watching the News at 5. See you back here at 6. World News is next.